Welcome to the Biological Life Sciences channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about bioelectricity and how it is produ produced in living system. What is the transport of uh, uh, material takes taking place in organisms and the action potential and resting potential generated by them. So let's begin the video. First of all, let's see what is bioelectricity. Bioelectricity is the bioelectric potential produced by living cells. Uh, it can be produced by using uh, the cell membrane and the biological activity that a cell is having. For example, uh, in electric eel, the current can range from 1 ampere, uh, 1 ampere at 600 volt to 1000 volt. So it's, it is in need a very high current. Okay, So this is an exception, but other cells are generally having a uh, few milliampere of current or millivolt of current. Okay, So let's see how the bi bioelectric phenomena happens. So first of all, the bioelectric phenomena uh, consists of three major uh, things in which the bioelectricity take, uh, can happen. First is cell membrane potential. So these are the membrane potentials that is uh, around a cell membrane. So in particular, it is very important in nerve cells for the conduction of lenses. Then it is responsible for action potential also. So therefore, uh, it is very important in the conduction of nerve cell and nerve fiber. The next is heart electrical phenomena uh, this uh, generally happens in heart so th therefore it's of very important importance in heart and the activity uh, or the electric impulses produced by heart is very important so this is uh, done due to the natural pacemaker that is sa node present in heart okay so this electrical sequences helps in working of heart and another bioelectric measurement is eeg that is electromyogram that happens in uh, muscles muscle cells and which helps in uh, the muscle cells to regulate their action so the main important uh, organ of a cell which is responsible for the bioelectricity is the cell membrane so a cell membrane it's a uh, this is the fluid mosaic model of uh, cell membrane which is widely accepted one so the cell membrane is having a lipid bilayer uh, in it uh, you can see here there are different transmembrane and integral proteins present here there is cholesterol also that helps in maintaining fluidity of the cell membrane and it's a lipid bilayer which is selectively permeable in nature Se uh, selective permeable nature means it will not allow all the uh, compounds or ions to pass through it it will selectively allow certain ions to pass through it so it is permeable to few things okay so due to this what is happening the uh, movement of ions from outside of the cell to the inside of the cells takes place through these kind of channels and due to which there is a potential difference that is generated across the membrane this potential difference constitutes the bioelectricity so the plasma membrane is of uh, in need very importance in bio biological electricity so the plasma membrane is also called as plasmonema uh, plasmolemma it's a biolog uh, biological membrane that separates the cell from outside Lip it's lipid bilayer and there are very various kinds of proteins that are present on this membrane it can be an integral protein it can be a peripheral protein it can be a protein that is uh, attached inside the cell membrane from the uh, inside of the cell so all these kinds of uh, proteins are present on the membrane so in addition the cell membrane is also involved in variety of cellular processes such as it helps in cell to adhere to a certain surface the conductivity of ions of different cells such as uh, the neural tissue the intestinal tissue the muscular tissue etc and it also helps in cell signaling uh, as a part of electrical signals okay so these are all the various important functions that a plasma membrane plays now let's see what are the different types of proteins that a membrane has the first type is integral protein the protein that inserts into the membrane or the uh, inserted into the membrane is called integral protein you can see here the structure of integral protein it can it can be passed through the membrane that is lipid bilayer then uh, there is a peripheral protein that is uh, present at the periphery and loosely attached to the inner or outer surface of the membrane so this is the types of uh, membrane protein that is present and few proteins are there uh, in between also here you can see uh, in between in this area few liquid proteins are there that helps in transport of uh, different components these are called as aquaporins okay so generally uh, these aquaporins helps in transport of 
the molecules inside the lipid bilayer okay so uh, it's a integral protein that lets uh, lets the water flow rapidly through the cell by diffusion through the phospholipid bilayer okay so let's see the membrane protein functions what are the different functions the membrane protein function side it helps in transportation enzymes a uh, transfer then receptor site are present on this it also helps in cell adhesion and attachment to the cytoskeleton okay so uh, there are different types of transport that is being helped uh, by the cell membrane the first transport is pa passive transport so passive transport is a transport in which uh, there is no energy required and the transfer of the solute or uh, ions or enzymes molecules takes place through the membrane on the basis of their uh, concentration difference that is diffusion okay so here the energy is not required therefore it's called passive transport okay so what are the different uh, criteria for passive transport or what are the different uh, phenomena that helps in uh, passive transport are first is diffusion so if the concentration of a particular substance is uh, more outside the cell and less inside the cell so naturally due to the concentration gradient the con uh, the substance will diffuse in into the cell membrane the next process is osmosis then dialysis facilitated diffusion simple diffusion etc so let's see in details about osmosis so osmosis is a process in which the cell is separated by a semi permeable membrane you can see the semi permeable membrane here so this semi permeable membrane helps in uh, separation of the uh, two medias together so the cell membrane acts as a semi permeable membrane you can see here on this side there is a high concentration of sugar and on this side there is a low concentration of sugar and amount of solvent molecule that is water is more and this is separated by semi permeable membrane here at this position okay so due to this what is going to happen the diffusion or the passing of the solvent molecule will always takes place from a lower concentration to the higher concentration so here the concentration of sugar uh, sugar is low and the concentration of solvent is more so naturally the solvent will move in this manner okay so here the solvent concentration increases so you can see here the level of water decreases here in this and the level of water increases here so this is how the movement of uh, osmosis uh, substance in osmosis takes place through the semi permeable membrane you can see here uh, there are certain proteins also that helps in uh, osmosis so therefore in that case it is called facilitated diffusion you can see here the different water molecules are helped by different proteins uh, which helps in transferring the water molecule to the other side of the membrane okay so this is what the at osmosis is so now let's see about the active transport that helps through uh, that helps to transfer different materials the main point here in active transport is the requirement of energy so remember the energy is required for the transfer of uh, different entities molecules compounds etc from the membrane in the form of atp okay so this always takes place against a concentration gradient therefore the energy is required here few examples are protein pumps vesicular transport endocytosis exocytosis etc okay so one of the example is sodium potassium pump this generally happens uh, quite uh, properly in uh, neural cells you can see the sodium potassium pump it's like this it's a voltage gated pump where uh, atp is required for transferring the ions through the membrane sodium and potassium concentration is there uh, outside and inside the cell so the when the uh, concentration of sodium and potassium reverses the nerve impulse passes through this okay so therefore it's called the state of uh, action potential or the state of rest resting potential and this is how the uh, transfer of uh, nerve impulse takes place in uh, neural cells and even uh, electrical signals are transferred in muscle cells also so these are the integral uh, uh, pumps that are present in the cell membrane and which helps in generating the cell membrane potential so let's see what is the potential in uh, regular cells so remember all eukaryotic cells maintains a non zero transmembrane potential means at least some uh, current will be there in a very uh, small amount but it will be there it is not zero negative voltage inside and positive voltage outside there is present that is of about minus 40 millivolt to minus 80 millivolt it also provides power to the cell and helps in transmitting different kinds of signals okay so the resting membrane potential is electrical gradient across the cell membrane 
so let's see what is the resting potential the membrane potential that has reached a steady state and is not changing it's called resting potential okay and the action potential is the electrical gradient is created by active transport of ions means the transfer of ions taking place uh, through the membrane uh, due to this there is action potential generated and this potential helps in transferring of impulses okay so most cells at the resting stage uh, are, is having 40x more permeability to potassium and sodium uh, potassium than sodium ions remember uh, the potassium and sodium ions present uh, in the surrounding outside the cell and inside the cell plays an important role in the bioelectricity okay so the resting potential is closer to minus 70 millivolt uh, generally maximum it can go to uh, minus 70 millivolt it can go cross that also but uh, some some amount of sodium leaks can also happen into the cell and uh, it is all governed by a, a sodium potassium pump which is AT based driven means energy is required here so let's see how we can calculate or determine the potential difference across a cell membrane uh, and what is the um, uh, basic criteria that is uh, basic uh, calculations that can be done so uh, you must have seen in electrochemistry the we, uh, we calculate uh, the electrical potential uh, between the electrodes of different cells using the NERST equations okay so NERST equation is used in biology also it has a physiological application and used to calculate the potential of an ion of charge Z across a membrane so this potential is determined by using the concentration of that particular ion say sodium ion or say potassium ion uh, outside the cell and inside the cell okay so the NERST equation here uh, gives uh, that is electric potential or E is given by RT uh, divided by ZF ln concentration of ion outside the cell divided by concentration of ion inside the cell okay so converting this uh, ln into the uh, logarithm to the base 10 uh, it we get 2.3026 RT ZF log 10 concentration of ion outside the cell divided by concentration of ion inside the cell okay so be using this formula you can uh, calculate the electrical potential across a particular membrane and this uh, de uh, depends on the ionic concentration and the ionic concentration can be measured using uh, many instruments uh, and electrodes such as uh, we use it in uh, determination of ECG, then determination of uh, uh, conduction velocity in nerve cell, then electromyogram. Likewise, we can determine the electrical uh, ionic conductivity or the ionic concentration. Okay, so here in this equation, the R is the universal gas constant. Its value at standard uh, units is 8.3146. 261815324 joules Kelvin inverse mole inverse then temperature is always in Kelvin here then F is Faraday's constant uh, uh, the value of it is 96 uh, 96 48 5.3321 23 uh, 310184 uh, coulomb per mole okay the Z here in this equation it denotes the number of electrons that is transferred or you can say the number of ions that is transferred in the cell or a, or a half reaction okay so this is how uh, electrical potential of a particular membrane can be calculated so the calculation of electrical potential or the current in a membrane is very important in certain diagnostic applications such as ECG then electromyogram electroencephalogram uh, and uh, determining the electrical potential in uh, muscle cells also so likewise uh, the electrical potential or bioelectricity is very important to the uh, human being okay so uh, th uh, this was uh, all about the bioelectricity uh, in this video thank you for watching if you like the video please press like button share comment and subscribe the channel if you have any queries do comment in the comment section below thank you for watching